Hi, Stacy. I hope I'm not messaging you at a bad time. I was wondering if you have a minute to chat. Good morning, Olivia. You didn't catch me at a bad time at all. I was just having a cup of tea after my finishing my morning chores. Is everything all right? Yes, everything is okay on my end. But, you know, I keep in touch with your daughter, right? Yes, of course. Chrissy tells me you to exchange messages quite often. I remember she downloaded the message app with you on the day she got her smartphone, like yesterday. Yes, you are right. We've been messaging each other practically every day since she got her phone. Gee, how long ago was that? I think it was when she was nine years old. So, it's been three years already. Has it been that long? Time flies. Doesn't it? Back then, I was quite hesitant to give my daughter a smartphone at such a young age. But it was around the time Nick was assigned to his project in Asia, so I hoped it would help us get through his absence. Yes, I remember you were worried. I know it wasn't an easy decision. I was so nervous at first. But I think it was a good call to give her a smartphone after all. She is a smart child, so she understands her boundaries. And it's been very helpful. She is able to keep in contact with her dad, and I can get a hold of her whenever I need. I'm able to feel more secure knowing she has a smartphone with her. I'm glad you feel that way. I can see it worked well for your family. Nick must feel the same since he is able to keep in touch with her from across the globe. But it's been nice that Nick has been able to come back home more often now. Not enough, but yes. He should be coming home for a couple of days next month too. Oh, that's wonderful. I am very happy that you three have a great relationship. I always love it when you come visit me as a family. Thanks. We will be visiting you together when he comes back next time. Anyways, Olivia, did you need to tell me something? Yes, yes. Sorry, I went off track. There's one thing that's been concerning me. I heard from Chrissy that you have been very busy lately. She told me you come home way past supper time. Oh, was this about me? Well, yes. I have been coming home later than I would like to recently. Chrissy told me how you would come home as late as 9 p.m. Yes, I guess I have done that a couple of times. Sorry to make you worry. I know I should mind my own business, but you know, I'm old. Worrying is like an old person's job. Chrissy, on the other hand, is only 12 years old. And I just don't feel so comfortable hearing that my 12-year-old granddaughter is home alone until 9 p.m. I understand. Just to let you know, though, I don't always come home that late. I've had important errands to run and people to meet. It just happened to occur around the same time, so I was suddenly super busy. But it's not like I come home at 9 every night, so please don't worry too much. Oh, okay. I must have misunderstood Chrissy then. Because I thought she was saying you haven't been home early for weeks now. She might have been sarcastic with you. You know, she's a 12-year-old. So, she does that a lot these days. Anyways, things have settled down now, so I won't be as late anymore. Thanks for looking out for my daughter, though. Of course, but if you need my help, I'm happy to come over and stay with Chrissy. If you prefer, she can stay with me at my house, too. I'm sure you have plans with friends, or things that you want to do. There's nothing wrong with having a good time once in a while. So if you need an adult to look after her while you're out, just let me know. Besides, I've got nothing to do anyways. Thanks, Olivia. That's very thoughtful of you. But I don't think your help will be necessary. In fact, I would prefer to keep our lives to ourselves. And by that, I mean we would like to be independent. No offense. None taken. I understand what you're saying. Sorry, dear. I didn't mean to be nosy. It is not my intention to interfere in your life. I just want to make sure you two are safe, that's all. I will respect your privacy. I know you would, Olivia. I think we have a very good relationship right now, and I feel very grateful for that. I think by respecting each other's privacy, we can keep it that way, you know? So, like I said, there's no need for you to feel that you need to help us. 
It's best for the both of us. I get it, and I appreciate your honesty. But I've been asked from Nick to see how you two are doing while he is away. And now Chrissy has told me in person that she is alone at night sometimes. So please understand, I am simply worried. I'm not trying to force myself into your family or anything. I understand, Olivia. And I hope you understand too that I have good reasons for coming home late sometimes. I am raising Chrissy on my own at the moment, so from time to time, I will get very busy trying to shovel everything. But not because I'm a bad mother. Stacy, you are a wonderful mother to Chrissy. I will be careful not to overstep. I promise. I am sorry if you felt that I have. Alright, I've kept you long enough. You and Chrissy take care. Hi, Stacy. Can I talk to you for a minute? I know I said I wouldn't interfere too much, but Chrissy told me you've been coming home late again recently. Is everything okay? I am very worried. Again, Olivia? I thought you said you were going to respect my privacy. I really don't owe you an explanation for anything. I have my own good reasons. Please stay out of it. I did say that I would respect your privacy, but I can't ignore when it comes to the safety of my own granddaughter. Or any child, actually. She waits for you alone at night. How can I possibly not say anything? She is 12 years old, Stacy. I know how old my daughter is. Listen, I had a thing I couldn't miss. So I came home late one time, that's all. I kept in touch with Chrissy while I was out to make sure she was okay. So, there really isn't anything for you to worry about. What was it that you couldn't miss? I was just seeing someone I don't get to see often. Was this person so important that you were willing to risk your daughter's safety? What is that you really want to say to me? Are you saying I'm not allowed to see anyone because I'm a mother? Am I not allowed to enjoy myself because I must take care of my child? You know what? I've had enough of your scolding, Olivia. You really are overstepping now. Of course you're allowed to see anyone you want. But Chrissy said she saw you getting in the car with a man she doesn't know. So I wanted to clarify who this important person is. Excuse me? Oh my god, you think I'm cheating on Nick? How dare you? He's just a friend. Chrissy said you came home late the night she saw you with him. So I think you do need to explain yourself. I can understand that you're upset that I am suspicious of you. But your actions are leading me to it. So, if I am misunderstanding you, then please explain. Fine. Perhaps my actions were suspicious enough for you to think that. But you can't assume I'm cheating on Nick from what a 12-year-old tells you. They are rebellious and sarcastic. Like I said, he's just a friend who came to pick me up on her way to see some friends. And to be clear, I am not cheating on my husband. That is why I am asking you directly, Stacy. Because I don't think you are the kind of person to cheat. I have known you as my daughter-in-law for several years now. I trust you. Well then, you should have believed me in the first place and never said such silly things. You are hurting my feelings. If that is what you would like me to do, then stop doing things that would make me suspicious of you. I'm trying really hard to trust you, but your actions speak otherwise. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, and I'm sorry. Maybe I have been irresponsible. I wasn't really thinking about Chrissy enough. But I need time off from motherhood too. I need to go out and have fun sometimes. I am going to explode if I don't. Of course you do. I fully agree that wives and mothers should be able to take a break. So, I'm not saying that you need to stop taking one. Right? I don't have Nick around to help me. I deserve to take a break or to enjoy myself. But you still need to prioritize your family, and especially the safety of your child. You're Chrissy's only mom, and I know Nick is counting on you too. So if you need to take time off, just tell me. I can stay with her while you go and have fun. I have absolutely no problem with that. That is all I am saying. You don't even have to tell me where you are going if you don't want to. 
Okay. I'm sorry, Olivia. I realize I've been selfish. I guess I was trying too hard to do everything on my own. I didn't know how else to free myself. But I see that's no excuse to leave my daughter at home at night. I was irresponsible. I fully understand you are under lots of pressure without Nick around. It's okay to use an extra set of hands and let that burden off your shoulders sometimes. And if you need me to be those extra set of hands, by all means, use them please. I will come to help any time. So don't push yourself so hard. Thank you, Olivia. I won't do anything that will make you suspicious of me anymore. And I will make sure Chrissy feels safe at all times. Oh, I am so glad you understand. I know you are a good mother to Chrissy. Hey, I know her birthday is coming up this weekend. Despite all your hardships of taking care of her on your own, I hope you can find a way to enjoy your time with her on her special day. Do you have any plans? Nothing in particular, but... I will be spending the day with her. I will make sure she has fun on her birthday. Sorry to cause you worry, Olivia, and thank you for being honest with me. Grandma, help! I don't know what to do! Chrissy, is everything alright? What's the matter? There's blood everywhere! How do you stop it? What? Why are you bleeding? Did you hurt yourself? I was going to catch a bus to visit you, but I ran into another kid on the bike when I was walking down the block. There was blood all over the place. You were on your way to visit me? Alone? Yes, because there's no one home. I was going to go to your house to surprise you. Where's your mom? I thought you were spending the day with her. She went out to buy my birthday cake in the morning. But she hasn't been home since. I was lonely. I didn't want to end the day alone. Grandma, help. What should I do? The kid from the bike is crying. He's bleeding badly. Okay, so you're not the one bleeding, but the boy from the bike? Are you hurt at all? I have a scratch, but that's all. He's younger than me. He's crying. And his bleeding won't stop. I understand your situation. Do you know where you are? By the park down my block. Do you remember? The one with the yellow slide? I was just passing by when he came out of nowhere and we crashed. I'm so sorry, dear. You must have been terrified. I think he is more scared than I am. You're right. Can you make out where he is bleeding from? Did he hurt his head? And are there any adults around you? I think it's coming from his leg, near his knee. He's wearing a helmet, so his head is okay, I think. I don't see his parents or any adult from where I am right now. Okay. All right, honey. Thank you for telling me. I have a friend who lives right in front of the park, so I will ask her to help you right away. You stay put. Is he going to be okay? Should he be going to the hospital? Everything is going to be okay, sweetheart. I will ask my friend to call an ambulance if it seems urgent. I am already in my car to come get you. I can take him to the hospital in my car if that's necessary. I will be there in ten minutes. You don't need to worry about anything. Can you stay by his side so he calms down? Okay. I am shaking, Grandma. I am so scared. It's going to be okay. An adult is coming in a second, honey. Try to talk to him. Tell him that everything will be okay. I know you can do it, sweetie. You're a big girl now. Okay, I will try to comfort him as much as possible. Thank you, Chrissy. You are doing great. Hang tight. I'll be there before you know it. Hi, Stacy. How's Chrissy? Is she enjoying her birthday? Hi, Olivia. Yes, she is enjoying it very much. She loves her birthday cake. I ordered a special one for today. She loves it? Are you sure about that? What? Of course I am sure. Why wouldn't she be? Oh, but I haven't had the chance to give her the present you prepared for her yet. I will keep it as a surprise for tomorrow. She should be in touch with you by then. Sorry for not giving it to her today, but I hope you don't mind. 
Stacy, if there is one thing that I do mind, is about you not looking after your daughter. Why are you lying to me? What has gotten into you? What lie? What are you talking about? Chrissy is with me now. You are still not home, are you? And you're even lying about the cake. You never went to pick anything up. I don't think you had anything ordered in the first place. Where have you been all this time? Huh? Chrissy is with you? Why? How are you with her? Did you invite yourself in? You should be relieved that she is with me, safe. You don't even know what she has been through today. The poor child is taking a nap right now in my bedroom. And you have a lot of explaining to do. Wait a second. Why is she at your house? Did you take her from our house without telling me? She was headed to my house to surprise me when she got into an accident with another child today. She reached out to me for help. Because she didn't know where you were. She told me how you haven't been home since you went out to pick her birthday cake up. She had no idea when you were coming home. So she reached out to me instead of you. Hold on. What accident? You're joking, right? I'm our mom and no one thought of telling me sooner? Why hasn't anyone told me about the accident? Is she okay? She crashed into a boy on a bicycle. Both of them are okay. The boy on the bike was younger than Chrissy and hurt his knee but nothing serious. They were both very shaken up, but I was able to handle the situation. Jesus, Olivia. If no one was seriously injured, don't scare me like that. I'm glad they are both okay. You should have been there for her, you fool. Chrissy was terrified. The boy was bleeding and he wouldn't stop crying, and his parents weren't around when it happened. But she kept on comforting him until I arrived. He had calmed down by the time I got there. His knee was bleeding pretty badly, though, so I could see why both of them were scared. Did you talk to his parents? Yes, it's all done now. Wow, okay. Well, I guess I owe you thanks for handling everything. I did what was necessary, but now I would like to talk about you. The fact that you didn't know Chrissy was at home tells me you are still not home right now. So where the hell are you? And where the hell have you been doing all day? Have you forgotten about her? What were you going to tell Chrissy? That you had to take the plane to go get to the cake shop? Um, I just got stuck in traffic. There was a huge accident on the road that I couldn't go anywhere until they cleared the scene. That's all. Just couldn't make it home sooner by chance. You've been stuck in traffic? Chrissy told me you left for the cake before noon. That's nearly half a day ago. You do know it's past 9pm now, right? Where was the accident? I haven't heard of any accident big enough to stop the traffic for half a day. I don't know the details. I didn't witness the scene. But I'm telling you, there was a lot of traffic and I was stuck. Perhaps there was a bad crash or something. You can't blame the accident on me though. I had nothing to do with it. And I didn't choose to get stuck. I see. So then you're saying you haven't got home by coincidence. You didn't plan any of it. And you didn't mean to abandon your daughter for more than 10 hours? Exactly. I promise I won't let Chrissy feel unsafe. I meant that. I would never leave her on purpose. Don't you believe me? You have to give me a little bit of trust. Stacy, I wish you would stop lying to me. You think you're making up good stories, but you are just a bad liar. I would find out the truth so easily. I don't understand why you can't see that. Excuse me? I am not lying. I don't even know why you think that. I am telling you the truth. Stop it, Stacy. Chrissy was watching you leave the house this morning when you said you were off to get the cake. She said you left in a man's car. The same guy Chrissy saw you with the other day. Which means you left your car in the driveway. So tell me, you have been stuck in traffic with him this whole time? Is that correct? And it didn't even bother you that you have been stuck in traffic for that long? while your daughter is alone at home? You didn't think to message her to tell her what was going on? See, the cake shop was quite far. I am not a confident driver, so I asked my friend to drive me. How's that so bad? I didn't message her because I've had bad reception. And for the millionth time, he is just a friend. Is it a sin for a woman to have a male friend? I think you all have such dirty minds to immediately assume that I am cheating on my husband just because I am with another man. Are you sure he is just a friend? 
Are you sure you are not lying to me again? Because you are digging your own grave to lie upon more lies. I assure you, I will find out if you are lying. I have nothing to hide. He is just a good friend who helps me get around. I'm not lying. Alright then. I will ask a private investigator to look into this matter. It will help us find out who he is. And what sort of relationship he has with you. I'm sure you don't mind me hiring one if you don't have anything to hide. Huh? A private investigator? You're going to hire someone to look into my friend? Yes, that's the plan. I told Nick what happened today. He said he wants to find out who he is. He will be back sooner than originally planned to look into this matter more seriously. But in the meantime, ask me to call a few investigations to start the process. Hey, wait a second. You told Nick. You can't do that. What makes you think I would keep this from my son? I'd ask you respectfully not to leave Chrissy at home by herself. I even offered you my help if you ever needed. That conversation was only a couple days ago. You couldn't keep your promise for a week. You have put your own daughter in danger. How do you expect me to keep this a secret? I refuse to let you risk Chrissy's safety. But, Olivia, that's not fair. He only knows your side of the story. What did he say anyways? He said he would make his final decision based on what we find out about your friend. But at the moment, he is outraged about how you have treated Chrissy. He is in disbelief and does not trust you with her anymore. He considers your action as abuse and is thinking about divorcing you. What? A divorce? No, 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 that can't happen. You have to make him stop. He can't divorce me. Stacy, I don't think you are understanding the situation correctly. You are the reason Chrissy got into an accident in the first place. If you didn't abandon her, she never would have tried to come to my house on her own. No one would have gotten hurt. I don't know if you are cheating on Nick or not, but as far as I can tell, you have prioritized your friend over Chrissy, and your choice has led to where you stand now. So you have no right to blame me or Nick. But, a divorce! Come on, both of you are just overreacting. How can you people be so cruel? Don't you have any sympathy for me? You are his mom! You don't think divorcing me is the best option for your son? Of course I do. In fact, I am very proud that he sees the seriousness in the situation, unlike you. I am proud that he is the kind of man who can prioritize his daughter's safety above all. And if he thinks divorcing you is best for Chrissy, well, I support his decision, a hundred percent. No way! What am I going to do? How am I going to survive without him supporting me? I have been a housewife for all these years. I can't work. I can't live without Nick. Don't ask me what to do. I can't help you on this one. You're an adult, Stacy. You should also have a brain. You need to learn how to think for yourself. But you'll cause this. If you didn't tell Nick, none of this would have happened. I thought we had a bond, Olivia. How could you ignore my feelings? You know what it's like to be a mom. You could have been more sympathetic. You even agreed that women needs breaks for their own homes. Have you forgotten? Were you just pretending to be my friend? I thought you understood me, Olivia. A break? Seriously? You must be crazy if you think I, or anyone else, would ever approve you abandoning your child to spend time with another man. And to do that on her birthday. That is not taking a break. That is you being selfish, irresponsible, and abusive. It is outrageous and will not be accepted. I have never been so furious at someone like this. I do not have any sympathy for you. You prefer for us to get a divorce then? Your son won't find anyone else after failing his first marriage. And Chrissy will be raised by a single father. Do you see how society would perceive them? Their lives would be ruined. Can you let yourself live with that? Me? Oh, I can live with that all right. If at all, you are the one who ruined their lives. But frankly, their lives would have been much happier without you in it. They don't need an absent mother or a cheating wife. I will give up everything to look after them both. They will have much less to worry about. Once you are alone, you will realize what a fool you have been. But hey, it won't matter, right? You'll get to take that nice long break you always wanted from being a mom or a wife.
My son came back right away to discuss what has happened while he was away. Chrissy and I gave him all the details, and he was devastated to find out Chrissy's safety has been jeopardized multiple times. Stacy tried to defend herself, but it didn't change his decision to divorce her, seeing that she has prioritized herself over their daughter. It wasn't hard for the private investigator to find out who Stacy's friend was either. They got a hold of a few surveillance cameras that captured them together, in which they were clearly more than just friends. Chrissy and her father sued both of them for child endangerment and emotional distress. Seeing that the two intentionally left Chrissy repeatedly to see each other, the court saw the serious danger caused and they were able to win the case. Stacy didn't stand a chance at winning Chrissy's custody, of course, and seemed to have given up at an early stage, which made Chrissy a little sad, which she got over fairly quickly. Nick has officially moved back now, and the three of us live together. Chrissy doesn't miss her mom much, since she was never around to begin with. For me, it has felt like I'm a full-time mom again, which is hard sometimes, but I'm glad to be there to support the two, and that Chrissy will not feel lonely again. I don't know how Stacy ended up the way she did, but I hope the divorce taught her a good lesson. And that she regrets her selfishness, now that she is the one alone.